Hello YouTube, this is Zephyrin, talking about my latest revelation with 78 RPM records and amplification. I am now a staunch advocate of Class A amplifiers for the reproduction of 78 RPM records, and I'll tell you why with this short comparison. That was made with a preamp amplifier, um, actually not a preamp, it was a phono amplifier, a flat level that um, was loaned to me. It's arranged in a push-pull amplifier, you know, one part of the amplifier amplifies the positive swing, another one amplifies the negative swings. And one thought occurred to me, because the sound on a 78 RPM record is pretty much constant through the whole spectrum of sound on the record at any speed. And I came to the revelations, how come uh, modern preamps didn't have trouble with 78 RPM records when they were played at 45 RPM versus 80. And I delved into electronics and read about it. And I think it's that whole full range noise, the scratchiness. The amplifier has to deal with all that scratchiness and get the sound out. And I've noticed comparing to Class A amplifiers, the hiss and pops basically do something with the amp where it's less efficient in actually translating the sound versus the noise. So if there's a scratchy record, you're going to get sound that's diluted by both half of the amplifier trying to do their swings without distorting. But most of the time, if there's a huge click in the record, you'll get a spike, a huge spike in the sound. And where do you see that little spike come down distorts the sound. And I read up on this and I was trying to find a way if there was an amplifier out there that didn't do this. And what I came up with was Class A amplifiers. The simplest amplifier out there, woolly inefficient, uh, takes a lot of power to run them because basically they're always on. When there's no signal, they're on. And how it works is just think of a lot of water up here under pressure, little valve down here. And I have six volts up here in my amplifier and I'm running two bipolar transistors that control that just to make it a little bit more efficient and to match the impedance, impedance with my cartridge. So, little signal from the cartridge comes to here, turns the first transistor on, whatever it's going up and down, and that signal goes to the second transistor that really modulates that direct DC current. So, this is zero, negative, positive. There's a positive current running at silent here, and what happens is that little voltage from the cartridge is making this upper voltage swing up and down. Um, I have some feedback in it, so it should be getting a really true replication of sound in the upper voltage string. Um, as long as you design the amplifier where, you know, a click down here doesn't go beyond what voltage can be supplied by your power supply, um, you'll be fine. And this type of amplifier is able to deal with basically uh, frequencies into the megahertz going up and down with no crossover distortion because there's no transistor that pulls up or pulls down. It's up here going up and down completely. And I think this is responsible for that whole argument with tube amplifiers being more natural sounding. Like this next example is straight from the record with my... Class A by transistor amplifier. You see how right away the sound, even though there's noise in it, the sound is still able to be translated completely. More so than the other one, because. And plus, my amplifier is designed to give loud line level output. So I don't have any other amplifiers that go on it except that one. Here's with a little bit of uh, record cleaning. Notice the difference? And for this next video, I'm going to do a direct recording from this one record because I love um, hymnal type records um, captured directly from the amplifier into my mixer no additional amp amplification other than what um, the Mark 11 makes and recorded at exactly 44.1k 16 bits no conversions whatsoever except for a low pass at 22k's and a high pass at 45 I believe just to show my argument of why I think 
for 78 RPM records, you should be using a Class A amplifier. And let me tell you, they're the simplest things to make. If you don't mind buying batteries, um, about 20 bucks at Radio Shack will get you the same amplifier. Thank you.